Today we're talking Google Pixel 3 XL, so stay tuned. What is up guys, I'm Tom and this is Tech Time, where I bring you all your tech all the time. If you're new here, I give you tech related videos every single week. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with my weekly content. Today we're talking Google Pixel 3 XL. Now this is probably the most leaked and talked about smartphone before release ever, but definitely in 2018. There were so many leaks and rumors and most of them stemmed around this disgusting notch. Would there be an extra version that didn't have the notch called the Google Pixel Ultra? There were so many conspiracy theories. It was pretty wild. It was a fun little thing to, you know, stay around and stay up to date on. There was tons and tons and tons of hype. Then the phone released. And it was exactly what everyone had dreaded. It was the notch. And it was not much of an upgrade from the Google Pixel 2 and 2XL. Besides the Google Pixel 3 being a little bit bigger than the Google Pixel 2, more screen, not as much bezels, things like that. The Google Pixel 3 XL was a little bit bigger and it had that dreaded notch. But in terms of like raw hardware, there wasn't much of a difference. You still got the four gigabytes of RAM. You did get the upgraded processor this year, the Snapdragon 845. But other than that, it was mostly software tweaks that they were talking about. So people were really kind of disappointed that Google would hype up a phone so much, even right up until the day of the release, the event, they had hyped things up on Twitter. They were talking about how YouTubers were bashing them and maybe everything would be wrong. And then they dropped exactly what everybody had thought. So it's pretty crazy that that's what they did. But we got the Google Pixel 3 and 3XL. Now I picked it up shortly after release. I scored it for a really good deal brand new from somebody I knew and I thought wow you know what I can't pass it up but I was going to pass it up because it just at eight nine hundred dollars didn't seem like a good buy to me being all software tweaks knowing that those software tweaks would make it way down to the lower phones like the Google Pixel and the Google Pixel 2. At the time I owned a Google Pixel 2 so I knew a lot of those features would be coming my way. So I figured I would wait it out like I said I scored a crazy deal so I ended up picking it up. I've been using it ever since. It has definitely been my main phone or my second phone at all times. In the meantime, I was using the Google Pixel 2, the LG G7, the OnePlus 6T, and two other kind of budget phones that I threw in there for the mix just while I was reviewing them. But this phone definitely stayed in one of my pockets at all time and about 85% of the time had my main SIM in it. So this is going to be a review from somebody who's actually used the phone, not for a week and just threw up a review. Somebody that actually used it, someone who bought it with their own money. I wasn't gifted this from Google. So everything I say here will be my own. Just like any of my other videos, I think Google didn't really do everything they should have done with this phone. And we're gonna get into it. So we're gonna start off with the hardware specs and design of this phone. It's a 6.3 inch screen, glass on glass design. And on the back, you get like a soft kind of matte glass on the bottom. And then you get glossy glass on the top that surrounds the camera and the flash and things like that. Now this soft glass is ridiculously smooth. Now it feels nice, feels great in the hand, but it is super, super slippery. You put this thing in your pocket or on a couch, there's a good chance that it's going to either slide out of your pocket or slide right off the couch, which leads to serious, serious concern for damage. Now, I threw a case on this thing right away because I don't trust myself with it. But if you rock that naked life, there's a good chance that this thing's gonna fall out of your pocket at some point your jacket pocket, your sweatpants, your jeans even, it's that slippery. So definitely be careful if you're just looking to pick this phone up, ear on the side of caution if you're not going to use a case. Maybe throw a skin on or something like that to add a little bit more texture on the back and some grip because this thing is super slippery. Now with the glass on glass design this year, you do get wireless charging. Now you only get fast wireless charging when you use the Google Pixel stand. That to me is kind of trash. I hate when they put out things like features and then they lock it behind proprietary software or hardware that they sell somewhere else. I hate that. You know, Apple's known for things like that. And now Google did it with their device right here. Only fast charging on the Google Pixel stand. Now the Google Pixel stand, from what I've seen, looks like a little cool thing. You put it on, you can, you know, have your Google photos going and it kind of makes it almost like a little mini Google home hub or something like that. But I'd rather see fast Qi charging on all devices that you could use. You know, there's so many different wireless charges out there nowadays, but you're not gonna get it. You're only gonna get regular charging on the 
other Qi charges out there for wireless charging. Whatever, you know, some people that's gonna make a big difference too. To me, it doesn't so much. I don't use wireless charging as my main source of charging anyways, because even fast wireless charging isn't the fastest. So I most of the time stick with wired. That's just my personal preference, but it is convenient to use wireless charging sometimes. So you also get a fingerprint sensor on the back. And to me, this fingerprint sensor is probably one of the worst at the flagship level. It works you know, really good if you have no moisture or no kind of dust in your fingers or anything like that. Where I work outside in construction, this thing is so unreliable. Probably maybe two out of the five times that I use it during the day, if I have something on my fingers, a little moisture or whatever it may be, it doesn't work. And then it locks me out. I have to put my coat in. It's pretty stupid. It really bothers me. And I've actually had the same issues with my Google Pixel 2 when I had it. So it must be something in the design of their hardware sensor that they put on there, the fingerprint sensor. It's just doesn't work the best. And it really does just piss me off, you know, and there's no facial recognition on here, no trusted faces like they had on the other Google Pixel 2s. So that is another issue because now if I don't have to, if I can't hit it with my fingerprint, I have to unlock it with either a swipe or something like that, a pin. And I wish they had the face unlock because at work that would just be perfectly convenient for me. But that's one more feature that Google decided to leave out of it. I don't know why, you'd have to ask them. Other than that, like I said, we get the single camera on the back, which is doing things a little differently than other companies, but we'll talk about that later. But overall, you know, the design of it's okay. The notch is disgusting. I don't care what anybody says, you don't get used to it. But we'll talk more about that right now when we get into the display. So the display is a 6.3 inch display, and now that's diagonal. So if you're measuring diagonal, you, you have to take that out. That is not usable. And the way that they implement the notch, a lot of apps, when they use certain apps, it just grays out that big area at the top. So it's not usable space. Now, when you watch videos on this display, the quality of the display itself is nice. Could get a little bit brighter, but overall, it's an actually really nice display. Off axis viewing on it is nice. I didn't have really any blue shift or anything like that. So the display quality is nice. The problem comes with that notch and the chin down at the bottom. When you're watching video and you zoom it in, it crops around that notch on YouTube and it, it just looks disgusting and it's not symmetrical. Because of the chin down at the bottom over here, it just looks ridiculous. It's just off-centered and it, it just really bothers me, it really does. Now, when you're listening to content, you get dual front firing speakers, stereo speakers, and they sound good. When they first came out, I don't know if there was an update that tweaked it, but when I first had mine, it was really kind of like mid-level or low-level volume was terrible. And when it was full blast, it sounded good. Now, after I've gotten a couple updates, I don't know exactly what tweaked it, but it does sound much nicer, much fuller. I mean, it doesn't have really that echoey sound. It had a real echoey, like stereo, kind of like surround sound feel to it, but it wasn't good. Now it's a lot better. I don't know which update fixed it that came in the mix, but it definitely has fixed it. But the problem with that is visually, these speakers are not the same size. The top one over here for the earpiece is much smaller than the bottom one. It just doesn't look good. It, look, it thinks like it's almost like two different companies designed half of this phone and then they just smashed it together last second. It's just, just really, God, just really weird. But overall, the display is nice. It's a 1440 by 2960 resolution. So you get in the 2K display, so you can watch you know content in 1440p, which is nice. And like I said, overall, the display is nice, but that notch is just disgusting. It gets in your way. I don't care what anybody says. You do not get used to this notch. It's deep, it's intrusive, and it just shouldn't have been there. I just don't like it. Moving on from the display, we're gonna get into software. Now, this is where Google either attempts or nails it with software. This is what this phone is all about is software. Most of the upgrades were in software. So that's where you expect them to kill it. Now right off the rip, take this phone out of the box, you turn it on, you get into stock Android, what they call it, and they're using like half gestures, half buttons. You swipe up to get to the recent apps in your app drawer. It's a clunky mess. My Google Pixel 3 XL unboxing, I really showcased it. It was so bad that right away I took it off and put on Nova Launcher. Just couldn't deal with it anymore. So now Nova Launcher, one swipe up and you're in your recent apps. You can scroll between them and I have a button for my app draw. Just works out so much nicer for me personally. It's the way I like it. I don't prefer 
the way that they do things, it's just so clunky and it just seems unfinished. It's not fluid at all. It's just bad. Other software features is you still get squeeze to Google Assistant, just like you did last year, and like you get on HTC phones. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't use it as much as, as I would think I would use it. I almost kind of forget it's there, bouncing between different phones. I forget that feature's there unless sometimes I accidentally do it. But it doesn't actually trigger too much accidentally. So it's, it hasn't been intrusive. It hasn't been in my way. But I just don't use it that much. I have a swipe up feature for Google Assistant or voice, you know, questions, anything I need. I just kind of swipe up through my Nova Launcher and it asks what I want to ask, and then I just do it that way. To me, that works out so much faster than just clicking on it, because most of the time I use Google Assistant when I'm already inside of the phone. But, you know, for that feature right there, it might be pretty cool for, for some people. To me, not too bad. Other than that, stock Android is what it is. You're running the latest version of Android Pie. It's nice. It's fluid for the most part, but I have had hiccups on the Google Pixel 3 XL. I've had freezes of certain apps. I've had just the UI software itself freeze a few times, which is something you wouldn't expect with the Google Pixel 3 XL. should be running super smooth, especially with stock Android. Um, the animations were really slow. I've turned those down you know, since then, but coming out of the box, the UI animations was really, really, really slow for some reason. Slower than you know most other phones that I've been using at this time. And with four gigabytes of RAM, it just, I don't know if that's what's bogging it down or something, but something definitely bogged it down. Other software features that I really, really enjoy are called call screening. And now that is where somebody calls you, you have the option to screen the call with your Google Assistant. It verifies that they are a Google Assistant and they're answering the call on your behalf. And then, you know, you can ask more questions. It's all written out in a text transcript. Really cool feature. Absolutely love it. I use it on all my spam callers and most of them don't say anything. They just hang up and nine times out of 10, they don't call back, which is really cool because it says it's being recorded and I think it just spooks them or whatever it is. So they don't call back. Now that doesn't stop spam calls because for every one I lose, I gain three new ones. It's really becoming a real epidemic. These robo calls and spam calls, it's getting out of control, but the Google screen feature works nice. Really like it. And it's something I use probably daily when I see spam calls coming in. I've used it on uh, a couple of my friends and things and they thought it was like, they didn't know what the hell was going on. Most of them hung up because they thought they were calling the wrong number. But for spam calls, it works pretty cool. And like I said, it keeps a text transcript of it that you can read along and see what they're saying. You can ask follow-up questions that the Google Assistant will ask. Really cool feature. A lot of software upgrades were made in the camera. We'll talk about those in a little bit. But overall, the software on this phone is stock Android, but it has a lot of clunk. RAM management on this is a software issue, I believe, but you only have four gigabytes of RAM. When the phone first started out, if you were running like the camera and Google Maps or something, and one other thing, it would shut down certain apps, and then you'd go back and you'd have to restart them up. Really a pain in the ass. That has been fixed for the most part from the latest update that I just got. RAM management seems to be um, better. The software seems to be a little bit better optimized. I haven't got as many crashes since the latest update in December. So, you know, it's, it's trending in the right direction. But when this phone was released, it had a lot of issues. It wasn't ready for launch. It didn't even have the call screening feature. It didn't have a lot of the camera features that were, you know, software based that they were really pushing out in their event. So when the phone came out, it was like half baked. So that, you know, Google dropped the ball on that. Release the phone when you're ready to release it. But, you know, they've gotten a pass from a lot of people because they just they just have they Google, you know, and they have a lot of power. <laughs> a lot of people don't want to talk bad about the phone because because it's Google. And, you know, people that get these review units, they don't want to really talk bad about them. But that's not everybody. I have heard some people really bash them. Some of the people that got these, you know, Google gifts from Google, they have bashed them. So big props to the people that kept it real. So now we're going to get into the main talking point on the Google Pixel phones. And that's probably going back to the main Google Pixel that they've ever released. This one is no different. It's the camera. The camera is a single shooter 12 megapixel camera. And then on the front, you're getting dual cameras this time. You're getting a regular focal length and then you're getting a really wide focal length. Now both are really good front facing cameras, but it's not the hardware that you're gonna speak of. It's not that this has great sensors better than other companies out there. It's absolutely 100% software based. 
using Google's algorithm and different features that they throw in there software wise and post processing. That's where this camera shines. Now for photography, still photography, I think in my personal opinion, it is the best camera for point and shoot. Now point and shoot is the key word here. You don't have manual features with this phone. You're not going to be taking it. You're not going to be tweaking the ISO and tweaking the shutter speed and doing things like this. This is a point, snap, shoot, and nine times out of 10, the picture is really, really, really good. Pretty much excellent. It just, it works that good. It really does. Stabilization on it while taking the pictures is great. You don't have motion blur that I get with a lot of other cameras that I've used, like some of the LGs. They just you know, almost stutter when they're taking the picture, the shutter stutters, not this one. Snap, quick, fast, pictures come out, unbelievable. I'll be throwing some up right here, right now. I'll just kind of overlay a couple as I'm talking, but the camera is unbelievable for point and shoot photography. Front facing camera, same thing. Really good main shooter. And then the other one, the wide angle, really cool for group shots and things like that, or just kind of give that like stretched out wide look. You can get so much more in the picture, in the frame that you couldn't get on a regular front facing camera. Now I enjoy that. I wish they had kind of just given us the wide with an option to zoom in on it. So then the notch could have been smaller because they kind of throw that out there because that is a big lens that they're using that it kind of made the notch a little bit bigger. Who knows if that's really the, the real reason, but that seems to be one of the reasons why we have this huge disgusting notch. Now, like I said, if they had just given us that one camera lens and been able to zoom in on that, that would have been pretty cool because that's another thing on the rear camera is digital zoom on this thing is pretty good. It doesn't have a second shooter telephoto lens like some of the other cameras out there, but this one has really good digital zoom. They use something to do with the handshake and things like that, some kind of software magic that they do. And it allows for pretty good, if not really good, digital zoom. Definitely better than other phones digital zoom. But I still don't think it competes with like a optical telephoto zoom that you're gonna get with other phones that have the two lenses. That's just my opinion. But it does the job. If you need to zoom in on something, you can get a fairly crisp shot. Now that's not all the way zoomed in, maybe halfway. It's gonna look good all the way. It's still gonna be noisy as heck. And at nighttime, forget about it. But at nighttime, they have a feature called Night Sight. It is the most unbelievable thing that you've ever seen. You can literally be in a room that is almost pitch black. Take a picture using the night mode and it takes a second, kind of like a long exposure, it processes it and then all of a sudden it pulls in all sorts of light and you're like, what the heck? I took it on a couple pictures on Halloween and it was literally pitch dark. I couldn't even see the color on this like skeleton that I took a picture of and it was able to pull out the purple on the bandana. Really, really good. It's like magical almost. It's like it's like witchcraft or something. It's, it's pretty remarkable. I've taken some photos over the weekend when I was in New York, um, dark taking a picture with the night sight just looks great. It really is a killer feature and it comes in handy in so many ways. Now, there is like a drawback to it. Sometimes it does brighten up the scene too much so that you might not even know it's nighttime. You know, it kind of doesn't look at, make it look completely natural. But if you need to get a photo in darkness, it, it does a great job. It really does it. And you can get a usable photo out of a most of the time unusable scenario that you'd be snapping a picture in. It's that good. And that is where Google shines with these little software tweaks and, and building up algorithms and things like that. You also get Top Shot, which is like you take a photo of like I took one of the Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center and it took almost like a short video, like a motion picture. And then it gave me options of every frame to choose from so I could choose a better picture and it suggested one to me. So that's a pretty cool feature right there but it's like hit or miss. It kind of uses it sometimes other times that I wish it took a picture, a top shot picture. I don't get the option to pop up. So, you know, that's it. There's also a photo booth mode that you can use. I haven't really played with that. Getting into video on this phone, it, it lacks, it lacks big time. Stabilization's good, things like that. But the quality of the video to me is not good. I was taking some video over the weekend in New York. Just didn't look the best to me. There's no option to change the frame rate from 30 to 60 frames. It just kind of does like some automatic thing, which is bogus. 
Um, you get 4K, 30 frames per second, no option for 60 at all. So that's just bogus because this processor has the capabilities of doing it. In my personal opinion, it's because the hardware is lacking. It's maybe not the best sensor. So everything's done with software. And then in the video, maybe they just don't have it built up enough to, to tweak it enough with 60 frames per second, whatever it may be. I don't know exactly why there's been no real reasoning why they haven't allowed us to choose different frame sites and things like that. I don't know. But I can tell, in my personal opinion, I really barely ever reach for this phone for shooting video. It's just not something I do. I it's just mostly point and shoot photos that I carry this around. But I'm confident that I carry this with me, that I'm going to get one of the best point and shoot pictures that I can get out of a smartphone in this day and age. You know, there's other phones that come close, but this one is my favorite point and shoot. I'm confident that I'm going to have great photos. So that's why I carry this around 90% of the time for taking pictures. So let's get out of the camera because the camera is definitely the best and worst, like I said, the best photos for point and shoot, but probably one of the worst videos at this high-end range of flagship phones. Now let's get into something else that's eh, okay. It's battery life. Battery life is decent. You get a 34, 30 milliamp hour battery and it gets me a day of use at work. I get out of work and I got maybe 20% left. I get screen on time of five hours, four and a half, five and a half hours sometimes, depending on how I'm using it. You know, screen on time is not the tell all of everything. There's so much more that's based on it. You're using GPS in the background, you listen to music, you know, so many different things deter that. So at work, I listen to a lot of podcasts and uh, you know, I take pictures sometimes. Um, watching videos and texting and emailing back and forth through the day using GPS. So it gets me a solid day of use and then I come home and charge it. It charges up, eh, okay, nothing to brag about. It's not gonna win any speed awards. My OnePlus 6T blows it out of the water when it comes to charging. So, you know, like I said, you're not gonna win any awards and then you can also wireless charge, but that's gonna be at a snail's pace unless you have the Google Pixel stand, which I do not and I will not be buying it because I'm actually selling this right here um, probably tomorrow. This will be the last day that I have the Google Pixel 3 XL. It's a great phone for you know, photography for the most part. Other than that, I can live without it. There's other phones that I like better. So battery life, guys, is solid. It's gonna get you decent battery life. You're not going to break any records. You're not gonna get two days of use out of it. If you go crazy hard, you might not even get a full solid day of like work day out of it depending on your usage. I use it pretty heavily. I have a lot of apps. And like I said, I can get a solid work day, come home and charge it. And that's perfect for me. Fine, no issues. I haven't had an issue where I ran out of battery and I'm like, damn, I just needed a little bit more. And if you do need a little bit more battery, I have a review of the Zero Lemon 4700 milliamp hour battery case. Definitely check that out. That will be my Google Pixel 3 um, playlist. You can go take a look at it. But overall guys, the phone at eight or $900 to me is not worth it. I think there's better options out there. I wouldn't buy it at that price range. I got mine for $600 brand new in the box. To me at that price range, it was good. It served me right. Um, I've had the phone on me, like I said, 90% of the time. And I wasn't you know, yearning that I needed something else. There's definitely little tweaks and stuff that I wish the phone had had. And through updates, a lot of these things have been getting fixed. So. We'll see you know, how much better it does get. I won't be there for the ride unless I can score another deal on one really good, but I probably you know, won't pick up another one. Maybe next year, I'll pick up the newest version of the Google Pixel. We'll see how it goes. But overall, it's a solid phone, guys. And then there's you know, different things that are better than others. You'll learn in the review. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And also, there's been a promotion going around on my Twitter where you save $100 and I'll earn $100 if you buy the Google Pixel 3 XL or 3. So if you're interested in that, go check out my Twitter. Until the next time, guys, I'll catch you later. Peace.